hier bist. Jello? Wow. Yes. Wow. They don't even want they don't even want the the, the streamer to <laughs> to start with the reading. They're like, you no, we want Jello to read. <laughs> Not just because it's I'm afraid. <laughs> Ew, that... we don't want the streamer to read. Let me know when you would like for me to begin. Is Jello too big? God damn it. Click on the thing. Okay. Is that. Okay, we have Jello. We have a Whittle Jello in the corner. Is that okay? Or you guys want them bigger? Thank you for the gifted sub. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so you read Cursed Bed, and I'll read Monster from a book released. I can't Turns get a good. break. Oh, no. I'm hoping we don't get sick, because we were just at freaking Wonderland yesterday, so... Oh, Shropshire, that would have been from the uh, stream avatars. They can, they can, like, jump and catch little stars. When would you like me to begin? Um, now. So these ones were submitted by Sin. Okay, read the first one. The Cursed Bed. As a young child, I would have the same nightmare every night. I would pull up to a house with my mom and somehow end up on a large bed in the bedroom of the house. Mom would leave the room, and in an instant the bed would be gone, and I'd be sinking in a pit of what I can only describe as quicksand. I would struggle to escape and only wake up just as I went under. These nightmares continued until I stopped sleeping in the bed I had at the time, which previously belonged to my older half-sister. She had endured a lot of abuse from her mother. I believe there was something attached to that bed that caused a nightmare, as I've never had it since getting rid of the dead. Damn. Oh my god. That's creepy. Yeah, like, the, I've heard... The evil, the evil created by her trauma attached itself to that bed. Yeah, and, like, cursed it. We, we watched a... Uh, oh, it was a Papa Meat video, actually, that we watched. Remember of all the cursed... The Cursed Objects Museum in Las Vegas, I think? Oh, yes. Firstly, the only cursed collection I would be interested in seeing is the, um, the one collected by those two, uh, who did all the hauntings. But yeah. they were exorcists. Though their names escape me at the moment. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, the Dibbit Box. Yeah, the Dibbit Box. You know the Dibbit Box was confirmed to be a hoax. Yes, in, in its, yeah, in his video, yeah, they confirmed it. But, you know what's funny? The Warrens, Mr. and Mrs. Warren. Yes, Ed they're the ones. Ed and Lorraine Warren, they are the, uh, they are the center of the conjuring, and they have all those cursed objects, like the Annabelle oh. doll. <gasps> oh my, f I hate dolls. I, they I have the Annabelle dolls. doll locked in their basement, though, uh. Why? Why would you bring it? Oh, I mean, I guess they're interested in that stuff. Oh my god. I can't know. Well. No dolls for me. What better place to have a bunch of demonically cursed objects and then in somebody's house who is... knows how to handle the thing, right? <laughs> Hello, Tentalite. Yeah. So, like, it's funny because even though the Dybbuk box was confirmed to be fake, like, I feel like I would still be scared. <laughs> I'd still be the scared. Problem, the problem with things like that is even if something such as that starts out at a hoax, there's the idea that the trauma created by it can leave a psychic imprint that actually makes it come true, kind of like that, uh... That's kind of like that creature in Harry Potter, where it comes out and imitates your worst fear. Y yeah. You create it yourself. That's the idea behind the Dybbuk box, is that nothing originally existed there, but 
when you become afraid of it, it makes it come alive to you. That's yeah. the curse behind that. Ridiculous. Pretty sure that literally was what the spell was called. Ridiculous. Yes. No, 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 no. That's what the spell is to defeat it. No, oh, Frig, I don't remember what the actual monster was called, though. What is this, the Goosebumps Club? That's exactly what, what Jello was going for. The monster, the Tulpa? The Tulpa. The Tulpa is a psychic ghost, basically, created by people who are supposed to or have lots of trauma, so it manifests outwardly as a Tulpa. A psychic entity that acts like a poltergeist. Ooh. Have to be careful about creating those things in your own mind. Projecting them oh, onto others. Oh, belief creates them. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, the belief. It's the one time where faith can actually turn against you. If you believe it's real, it can hurt you. From Buddhism mythology. Mm -hmm. Basically a spiritual entity created by the thought of men. The tulpa is created through clear, intense, and sustained visualization. Oh. Me after I played Madison. <laughs> If you become traumatized or afraid of enough of a certain instance, a tulpa can be created that mimics that instance and can torment you. Though Holy really, crap. it's just, it's really just you psychically tormenting yourself. That's the idea behind it. Yeah, that's creepy. Even though it goes to show the power of your mind. That's creepy. Tulpas will almost always be short-lived mental projections deteriorating shortly after being created. However, they can sometimes have enough energy to be visible. Yeah, okay, okay. Oh they can God. also have enough energy to physically interact with things around them. Though technically, it's just you by proxy. That's just Slenderman's grandpa. <laughs> My God. Slenderman <laughs> wishes he was as strong as I am. <laughs> The last picture, which was the last picture? Oh, hey! We have a tulpa right here. It's, it's Jello. Jello is our tulpa. <laughs> <laughs> Jello! <laughs> <laughs> that laugh. Okay, then we have Monster from B a Book released. When I was in middle school, I got curious about occult things and had brought home some books on the subject of monsters of various kinds from the library. That night, out of nowhere and not connected to any dream I was having, a horrible, terrifying fla uh, face flashed in my mind, causing me to wake up screaming and crying. You'd think it was just the monster books, but a couple things have me believe otherwise. Mom saw the exact same face flash in her sleep a few seconds before I woke up screaming. She thought she saw spirits of some kind walking upstairs earlier that day, and, from what I've learned since then, the face resembled that of a biblically accurate demon. This face has reoccurred recently. Whoa. You released the demons. It's Jello. Yeah. Jello's the tulpa. And demons have been released from the book. Oh god. Yeah, I've heard of people, yeah, some people, they believe that, like, if you take books or something that are attached to a curse and you open them to read them and stuff, the demon's been released. You release the evil spirits. You should have heard of the story of that, of the ghost town of Tombstone, where if you remove anything from there, the creatures from that town will follow you and torment you until you return the peace and apologize for taking it. Oh, Damn. That- Simply look at the town of Tombstone. Yeah, that- that remind me- reminded me of the Ouija board, where I only just recently learned that if you use the re- the- the Luigi board, um, you have to say goodbye. At the, like, you have to end it with saying goodbye. 
you have to say goodbye to end the session with a creature, otherwise it simply takes that as an invitation. Yeah. Ghost Road by... That's just the plot of the first Goosebumps movie, uh, movie except with a lot more cultful. Luigi... <laughs> Never mess with Ouija boards. Yeah, I, um... I... See, I... Don't, like, 100% believe in the supernatural and all that stuff, but I, I will not use a Ouija board. <laughs> I will not use a Ouija board. I've been somewhat traumatized by my experiences. Yeah. I remember yeah. I had a... I... When using... Go ahead. Apologies. When using a Ouija board, remember... The only thing is that they're interested in talking to you or something that has an agenda or something it wants to get. It's never because it enjoys it. Hmm. That's an interesting way of looking at it. Yeah, because, like, why else would they be talking? Why, why else would they be communicating if there isn't something they want? A human spirit will move on quickly to the next place. Only something other than a human would be interested in lingering and speaking Ooh. to those that are alive. Every time I see something involving a Ouija board, something bad always seems to happen. Yeah. You think I have time to use a Ouija board? I am not spending money on that. <laughs> well, God, I don't even know how, how, how much they are. What, like 50 bucks or something? They're made and marketed by Hasbro Toys for kids, you know. Oh my God, I, what? As a toy for a kid? Here you go. Timmy, you can talk to the spirit of the house. It's fine. Make sure you say bye yeah. at the end, though. <laughs> Here, Timmy. Here's a little board so you can talk to Grandma. <laughs> oh, my God. I summon the ghost of Belle Delphine. She wants to sell me her bath water. <laughs> I want to sell my bath water, too. Tell her to give me some, yep. uh... She wants to sell tips. her protoplasm. That's what it is. Her... Oh, wait. Oh, her ectoplasm? She's gonna, yeah, her ectoplasm. <laughs> She's gonna sell her ectoplasm. I always use a Ouija board to have someone to drink with. Ketsuya. No. Please don't do that. That's not grandma. <laughs> that doesn't sound like grandma. I don't remember that. Listen, I'll be honest. Wherever Mr. Ketsuya lives, I think he is far too close. To, uh, to use a Ouija board in places where there were huge World War II battles. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> see it probably has like a whole friggin' slew of uh, ghosty friends then to, to play with. So there's two long stories. There's one that was submitted by Dread, uh, The Endless House. And there's one that was submitted by Jay, uh, the grape story. <laughs> the grape story. So, who do we want to read The Endless House? That's the longest, so we'll read this one first. And who should read The Endless House? Do, do, do. What happened? Wait, Jello, if you turn off the the ring light, what happens? I don't know how to turn it off. <laughs> I'll ask the ghost. <laughs> Who should read it? Turn it. Oh, that looks better. Heck yeah. Endless House is a shortened retelling of No End House from No Sleep. Oh. I've never heard it before, actually. I haven't heard a lot of, uh... G scary stories. I only started, uh... <laughs> venturing into scary stories last year. <laughs> because I was a weenie. And I am now not a weenie. It's I mean, I am weenie. a weenie, but I'm just braver, I guess. I don't know. I like to suffer. <laughs> Congratulations, Oshi. You leveled up from weenie to wiener. <laughs> Hi, I read it last year. 
and they went over it on Creepcast. Oh, okay, okay. Wait, I'm it's waiting. The story. I'm waiting. We're waiting for Ketsuya's ghost to to decide who who reads this. <laughs> oh goodness! Somebody get the Ouija board. <laughs> Lamb, it is Jello. It is the Tulpa demon. <laughs> Jello is the Tulpa demon. <laughs> Okay, I'm reading this one, so you'll read the grape uh, story, which was submitted by Jay. So I'll read this. All right. Hold on, let me zoom in. Okay. Oh, nope, that was too zoomed in. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. It's going to be a long one. You're going to have to hear me talking for so long. Okay, so this was a story submitted by Dread. The Endless House Near the neighborhood, there is an abandoned house known as the Endless House. Children call it that way because none of them was brave enough to walk through the entire house to make it to the end. This is where the story of David starts, a kid that was challenged to walk through the house. If he succeeded, he was promised to gain $500. Only $500. Alright. It wasn't bad at all for only having to cross the house side to side. It was quite a lot of money. Well, I guess when you look at it that way, yeah. Um, he wasn't especially brave, but those $500 were very juicy. And like, it was only abandoned house, so he accepted. Everyone was ready. David went in with feigned determination, but that nobody could notice. Then those friends went to the back part to see him get out while one of them was watching the front door. Once inside, David saw that near the entrance there was a room with the number one. He thought his friends had created some kind of haunted house, and he had to follow the numbers to get to the end. Maybe they would ask, um, maybe they would ask him something after to know if he actually completed the route. David entered the room number one, and he immediately couldn't help laughing. There was Halloween childish decoration all over the room. Fake spiders, disproportionate plastic skeletons, spray on some of the walls. He knew if the rest of the rooms were the same way, it would be even funnier. <laughs> Upon getting in the next room, the environment had improved considerably. There was a fume machine, lights that made shade everywhere. The thing is that the room, uh, the more rooms he passed, the worse was what he found in each one. For example, in the third room, there was real bugs all over the place that started attacking him. In the fourth one, he found no doors. He stayed there for a while until the door appeared out of nowhere. The fifth and sixth room were also pretty much empty rooms, but with a chair in the center and a light bulb. <gasps> Not medicine! <laughs> no! In the seventh room, David was shrouded by a darkness so deep he couldn't even see his hands. But even so, he felt there was somebody else in the room with him. Almost like that person was at his side. He could hear their breath. With anguish, he started scratching one of the walls, like he had the hope of going through it and getting to the next room. Even though at that point, he wasn't thinking of finishing the game anymore, but getting out of the house. Somehow he managed to find the door, and the eighth room was the one that started to break him. All the previous stuff could easily have been the greatest fear he had ever experienced. But when he saw this, he thought he went insane. It was like the fifth and sixth room. In the middle of the room, there was a chair with a light bulb above it. Except this time, there was a person sitting down. And it was not any person, no. It was a clone of David, with a number nine written on his chest. The clone started begging that he didn't hurt him. He knew what he was going to do. 
David looked around the room trying to understand that somehow he still didn't get it. But then he saw there was a knife below the chair. It took him quite some time to figure out that he wouldn't get to the next room if he didn't kill his clone. So he did. As soon as he stabbed it, the light turned off and he felt how his clone vanished. He most surely was in the room number 9. There he stayed without moving for hours, or maybe even days? He wasn't aware of it anymore. However, suddenly, in all that blackness, he was able to see a light in a corridor that guided him to another door. Except this one didn't have any number. He wasn't exactly full of hope, but when he went through it, he found himself out of the house. Everything was like before, getting in except for a sign with some text congratulating him for making it to the end, and the $500 on the floor. So he assumed his friends let him there, uh, let them there. In a fit of madness, he started laughing. He couldn't help it. He was laughing because he had won. He was laughing because he had the money. He was laughing because he was finally heading home. And he was uncontrollably laughing when right before entering his house, he saw there was a big number 10 engraved on the main door. Oh shit! He didn't make it out of the house! Hello, wolf! This was way watered down. <laughs> oh my god. Open the door! <laughs> Open the door! Oh, damn. Damn. Makes me want to read the whole story, actually. That sounds freaking creepy. That sounds creepy. It. it it reminds me of Madison because of the chair with the light bulb above it. When you first wake up and you're in that room and the chair is like spinning around as you go around, it's like following you. Oh, we have ads in three minutes coming up. Ads. <laughs> so we'll have to wait until the ads. Won't it be interesting when we get to like the 2040s and we have chips inserted in our brains and the advertisers just stream their ads to <laughs> our dreams? <laughs> oh my gosh. Can you imagine? That'd be terrible. This dream brought to you by... <laughs> Futurama streaming ads to your dreams. Yep, that's what they're brought to you by. This ad brought to you by nipple clamps. No. No. That sounds terrible. That sounds terrible. This dream brought to you by McDonald's. Try our Whopper <laughs> with a new hot sauce. Now back to this dream where you are in an orgy. <laughs> McDonald's, try our... Try our quadruple pattied uh, Big Mac with like extra Big Mac sauce. Bro, McDonald's is like friggin' like $35 for two people to get a meal now. It's ridiculous. Imagine it's... you're having a dream. You own a house, you open the door, and your beautiful <laughs> wife is standing there, and then it just says, Brought to you by Amazon Prime Prime, where we make your fantasies even bigger. And then everything disappears, <laughs> and you wake up in your shitty one-bedroom apartment. <laughs> this stream brought to you by Lightspeed Briefs. <laughs> Liking this zombie nightmare? Arby's. We have the meat. Oh, gosh. Oh, zombie meat burgers. Yum. Lightspeed Briefs. You'll move at the speed of light. Hell yeah. It'll make your butt oh. look great, your package look great, and you can run fast. <laughs> oh, 
This Olympic dream brought to you by a Viagra where you can pole vault without the pole. <laughs> Come on, it took me like five seconds to actually get that. Because I'm dumb. Just the Imagine the accompanying <laughs> sound effects of the person running. <laughs> Imagining this dude just running and he just like springs forward. <laughs> you like this dream? Well, this was only a trial. Pay twenty nine ninety nine to see more. Oh, did you like the stream? <laughs> That's a trial. Yep, yeah, pay twenty nine ninety nine to see the rest of the dream. If you don't pay twenty nine ninety nine a month, we're just going to default you to nightmares. That's our nightmare package. It's free. <laughs> to upgrade to dreams. You're gonna have to pay twenty nine ninety nine a month. Yeah, or you'll just have infinite nightmares. Womp womp. Otherwise, you'll have yep infinite nightmares brought to you by Amazon Prime plus 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 XXX. <laughs> There's the ads. He's cheating. Third leg not allowed. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> I'm taking 20 milligrams of melatonin. If I get ads that ask me to pay, I'll blame that. <laughs> What if you don't pay money for dreams and you just get sleep paralysis? Oh my gosh! No! <laughs> What's that, would that? Be, that would be terrible! Mecha Jeff Bezos. Cyborg Bezos has decreed that you will only have nightmares unless you pay for Amazon Prime Dream Plus. Tier 3. <laughs> Dream Plus? Otherwise it's all nightmare para. It's all uh... Sweet paralysis and nightmare demons for you. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. And don't forget about linking your Facebook account to your dreams so you can share them with your friends, courtesy of Zuckerbot. <laughs> <laughs> you just wake up, there's a share button. Ah, yes. Can you imagine all of the incels sharing their sex dreams with their unfortunate people on their friends lists? No. Ooh, sleep paralysis once a week? Oof. That's tough. What if you get caught using a VPN in your brain? <laughs> oh god. Ah uh, yes, using a VPN in your brain. Unfortunately, if you don't pay the VPN fee, everything is in a language you don't understand. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. Your dreams are all in epic. Oh, man. How do I even read? What's that? You're French? All your dreams are in German now. Not the microwave gun. No. Not the mic. You, but, oh, man. That was from Alana's stream, but I don't remember what it was, but there was the microwave gun. Yeah. Break my life. Oh, God. Imagine if the sleep paralysis demons is a smexy lady. What? No. <laughs> Imagine you're experiencing sleep this... paralysis, and your sleep paralysis demon is Cottontail. The, the succubus. It's Cottontail. <laughs> when your sleep paralysis hits, you just see Cottontail. <clears throat> Ten seconds. <laughs> sins, sins now changed to yes, I'll pay to have sleep paralysis so I can see Cottontail. <laughs> Only she shows up and busts your balls. <laughs> uh -oh. oh my god, maybe they would introduce like. I'm just making this better for San Arte. The, the they they would introduce you can pay twenty nine ninety nine a month to have known 
sleep paralysis and you'll just have nice dreams or you can pay the cheaper price of $9.99 per month and you'll still get sleep paralysis but at least it'll be with cottontail demons exactly <laughs> <laughs> if you pay if you pay the premium plus tier though your sleep paralysis demon can be any of your favorite VTubers. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. All right. The ads are over. So Jello will now read the grape story which was submitted by Jay. <laughs> Sorry, I love and respect the hell out of her. Same. Her sploosh is delicious. Editor, cut that out of the VOD. No, I am the editor. <laughs> the story, the grape story. <laughs> I remember as a young child. Maybe age five or six. My parents were pretty deep in the sauce and the hard stuff. But through all of the self-destruction they put themselves through, I never remember the house ever being dirty. The house always smelled of a fresh pine tree. From the cleaning chemicals they would use on the floors, I remember the smell of fresh strawberries. It was my mother's favorite scent for air fresheners. Also the smells of light candles. But one smell I never remember having is the displeasure of experiencing, at a young age, was the smell of a cigarette. Though my parents smoked, they always went outside or intended a new car garage to smoke as not to make the walls turn yellow or under the nicotine and to not make the house smell of smoke. It was like that for a while. Life was mentally unstable, but I had what I needed and my parents provided for my two siblings and I fairly well. All was fine, at least, till I would go to sleep at night. I distinctly remember the smell of a grape, smelling cigarette or cigar in my room. The smell would come from an area of my bedroom where my father would sit until I went to bed in an old rocking chair. The smell and memory will follow me until I was about 16 years old and in high school. I was walking through my hometown. I would take notice of the city doing demolishing on the old areas and tearing down all the old houses I remember growing up around. This piqued my interest into finding out all the information I could about the old house. What I found shocked me to my core. Prior to my parents owning the house, there were two other owners of the property. One, an old widow woman who had the house passed to her after her husband died of lung cancer. The first owner, an old World War I veteran who died of lung cancer. A distinctive man with a star spangled with star spangled eyes and a cigar in his mouth. I only imagined what flavor that cigar was. I bet my life it was grape though. Ooh. So he lived in the house of the war vet? That would be correct. The war veteran passed away. But the smell lingered. A grape flavored cigar. Interesting indeed. Hello, Roy. Moist. I was walking through my my hometown. Okay, yeah, 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 I had to read it, like, one more time, just to, like, <laughs> to absorb the information. The Some... story is written very oddly. The punctuation very is short. odd. Yeah, very short. <laughs> I, sh I should have gone through and maybe fixed the punctuation on the story, but it's fine. It's fine. Sounds like the old man just loved the place and didn't move on. Yeah, he's just the the ghost of the war vet is just sitting there chilling with his uh, grape cigar. You see him sometimes Always. in the corner of the room, just rocking, smoking his cigar. Oh wait, Jay, like, was his experience or 
Um, it's a real someone's, uh, oh, okay, I didn't know. It was written as if it was like a story story. Oh, okay, jo j oh, so Jay experienced this himself. Damn, okay. Damn. That's creepy. I have, I have a story that's from my own life. If anybody would be interested. Wait. What did you just say? Me? Yes. <laughs> but I have a story from my own life, if anyone's oh, okay. interested. <laughs> I thought you just said I have my own life, and I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, let's hear J Jello's story. I wish I had my own, but I don't have any personal scary experiences. So let's hear Jello's. Let's go, let's go. When I was 16, I was living in the rural South, right? So, there was one evening when I went out to pick up my uncle from a gas station at about 3 in the morning. So, I hop in the car, and I drive to pick him up. And unfortunately, he's drunk. I don't know why. He gets in the passenger seat and we drive home. Because I'm only on a learner's permit, it would be bad if I got stopped by the police with a drunk adult in the passenger seat. So I took a road back home that I didn't ever take. It was a rural road that cut between a couple of old farms. As I'm driving along this road, um, there's two embankments on either side that get laid down before going into the old fields. As I'm driving along the road, up ahead of me I see a pen trick of light, and I pass a gentleman who is on the, walking along the shoulder of the road. He, I distinctly remember him being an African-American gentleman with a hat and with a straw-like hat and overalls carrying a lantern. I'll never forget the exact image that I saw when I passed him. But when I did, when I looked in my rear view mirror, he wasn't there anymore. He was gone. For a long time, I thought maybe I had scared the man since it was sort of an abandoned road and he maybe fell down in the abatement, but I was never brave enough to go back and check. Oof. Yeah, I wouldn't, uh... I would have also not gone back and checked. No, thank you. I have one other story, though it's not my own. It's oh, one no. was told to me by my grandmother. Kitsuya experienced the same thing? Damn. Oh, I didn't... What the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a ghost. Yeah. Another story I had um, was told to me by my grandmother, and I would like to share that one if anybody would be interested. Yes. Go, go, this go. one, this is a story that dates back to the early 40s when my grandmother was young. She lived in a farmhouse that had um, been converted into a home, um, and her room was directly adjacent to what would have been an old slaughterhouse. So her closet wasn't didn't have the fittings that a normal closet would. Instead, when you open the closet door, it opened to a meat locker room with old hooks hanging at the top. The door was, was locked for pretty much the entire time she was there. Mother kept it locked. However, there was one night when she woke up, the door was open, and she said that she saw a skeleton standing there in the, in the old meat locker room, and it began to plight at her. And the skeleton, the one unique thing that she noticed about it is that it was missing her pink, its pinky finger. She said she was so scared she covered her head with her blanket and when she looked up, the door was shut again. Two days later, while she was out with her mom because she was too scared to be in the house by herself, her house burned down. Oh. She told her, yes, she told her mom the story and her mom said that it was most likely the spirit of their father and she showed her my grandma a picture of her father, and sure enough, he was missing his pinky finger. She, she told me that she very strongly believed that her father's spirit showed back up to scare them out of the house before it burned down. Ooh. 
Oh, yeah, I remember you telling me that. <gasps> oh, shit. Yeah, I would have left the house. <laughs> I would have been like, hell no. I'm leaving. I am leaving. <laughs> That's creepy. Shropshire. Sh Shrop Sh Shrop Shrop um, who would you like to read your story? I named it the Shadow Man. Uh, sorry that it says submitted by sin. It was not submitted by sin. It was in fact submitted by Shropshire. I forgot to change that part. Hoshi can read it. Okay, my turn this time. Let me make it a little smaller again. <laughs> All right. Shadow Man. So the story isn't huge or really scary, just something that made me go, huh, that was weird. I used to live with a couple of roommates, a friend with, uh, from high school and her boyfriend. Ah, the third wheel. All right, all right. <laughs> One night we were all watching a movie together and my friend's boyfriend kept getting up to walk down the hallway. I asked why he kept doing that. My friend said she kept seeing a shadow man in the hallway. I didn't see anything and didn't think anything of it. We finished the movie and cleaned up. I told them both goodnight and walked down the hallway. And all of my hair stood on end and felt as if there was someone behind me. Oh god. I also got really cold, but it was gone a couple seconds after that. Both of my roommates asked why I froze and told them what happened. My friend said, I told you! Still don't know what it was and I just went to bed. Yeah, that, um, that definitely sounds weird. <laughs> to me, the third wheel. Oh man. Oh god, I, I've i had moments like that, like, if I'm in a, um, sometimes if I'm in a room by myself or something, and I think it's just because I don't like being alone, I don't know, like, I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, I'll get that, like, chilling feeling of someone, of something, like, watching me, and it's creepy. <gasps> Roy! Holge. Actually, I remember. I have to spin the wheel twice. Let's go. Yeah, Roy, I'll spin it twice. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Didn't see anything, just felt something that was gone really quick. Yeah, that actually reminds me of once. This was like when I was really young. I was, I don't even know, but I, like maybe 10, maybe a little older, I don't really know, but it was like eons and eons ago because I am ancient. <laughs> um, I was hanging out with my cousin in her bedroom and we were playing Barbies and she had to go do something. So she left me in her room alone and I got this like bone chilling feeling so bad that someone was watching me I literally was like frozen on the spot even though I could hear my cousin like telling me hey come here come here Hoshi I want to show you something I literally couldn't move because I was so freaking scared <laughs> she had to like come back to the room and be like uh hello are you gonna come <laughs> a Barbie play look okay Barbies were all the rave. I had that feeling every time I had to close my workplace late at night. I would not be able to do that. I would not be able to do that. I did have I've a lot. I've had this feeling. I've had this kind of feeling while working Firewatch what? in an abandoned hospital wing. Hell no. No, I'm Knuff. Yes. Everyone is a Knuff. Everyone is Knuff. 
I did have a lot of sleep paralysis episodes in that house too. Moved a couple years later and haven't had sleep paralysis since? What? Oh my god, that's... <laughs> that's actually kind of scary, what the hell? That is actually... Uh, pretty scary, not gonna lie. 